What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show, Quest for Dough. I'm your host, Cody Pritchett, and I'm really excited for today's guest. But before I introduce him, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's reached out to me um, on Instagram and LinkedIn. I've gotten all your messages. If I haven't got back to you, I will. But I'm so excited. So many people want to share their stories with me, and I'm so excited to get around to everyone's story and, you know, share everyone's quest for the dough. But going on today, my guest is Keegan Mataele, um, and he started The Forge. The Forge, is, what it is, is where you can come and become a, a blacksmith for a day. Yep. So I'm going to introduce Keegan. Well, here he is, and then he's going to explain. So explain to me what The Forge is, and then I'm going to ask you some more questions to explain. Yeah, I mean, you summed it up pretty perfectly. Uh, you can come in and be a blacksmith for a day. Um, what we do is we teach people how to take horseshoes and turn them into usable knives. Um, it's pretty fun. It's usually, it takes about two hours. You don't need any experience. We help you right from the get-go to get things going. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty easy I, – I would say it's pretty easy, even if you haven't done anything like it before, we, we help you get through it. So so it's like, a, like if you want to go on a date night, you guys have a – a place, a location where people can go and become a blacksmith. So like you take your wife, it's like a date night. Is it mainly exactly. date night? Yeah, we do mostly date nights. We have started getting more into like corporate events as well. So people will come and do team building activities with their company. Okay. But I would say about 90, 95% of the, uh, probably like 90% now is all date nights. And it's a blast because you can come in with like you and, and your spouse or like whatever. You can come in with like other couples, do Double date nights, stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, awesome. And so, take me through the process. So, me and my wife come. We get to the forge, to your location, and what, what do we do? Yeah, so you guys show up. We get you set up with the gear, like goggles, aprons, stuff like that. We run through some safety beforehand because right. we are working with metal that's like 2,000 degrees. So, I um, want to make sure that everybody is aware of what's actually going on, how to properly handle the metal. Um, we have waivers and stuff for people to sign. And then... What we typically do is <clears throat> we will take in, we'll have the horseshoes in the forge, which is what heats up the metal. Right. And we will build a knife along with you. So we start off by, okay, this is the first step. Like I would teach that and be like, okay, this is how you do the first step. And then you and your wife would copy and do the same thing. We just kind of go back and forth until you guys are done pretty much. Nice. Yeah. It's exciting. Okay. So where is this located? So it's in Orem. Currently being run out of my garage. Very okay. fancy, very Luke's. But nice. uh, <laughs> yeah, I like it. Okay, um, so let's let's go from the beginning. So this has been going for six months, right? Yeah, a little over six months. And you 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 have a partner in this? Yeah, uh, my buddy Andrew Baker. Okay, so take me to the beginning. So a year ago, or when this idea came about, and kind of what led you to the just you know tell me your quest. What where, where was the beginning? Yeah. So um, I've always been pretty handy with things like woodworking, like I flipped at two houses with my wife and um, I didn't know anything about metalwork. So right. it's kind of just interesting to me. Um, I took, funny enough, a, a blacksmithing class from somebody and as I was doing it, I was like, this is actually, this isn't as hard as I thought it would be. Like I knew that I was capable of doing something like that. So I, I started looking into it a little bit more. Um, this is up in Seattle, by the way. And um, when I was in this class, I, I started thinking, this, I feel like this could do really well in Utah. Like people are always looking for like unique data ideas, something different to do. Right. And especially like even thinking from that, that corporate standpoint, I was like, oh, this could be a pretty cool like group activity as well. Um, so that's how, how, that's how like the initial idea was planted, started kind of festering and growing. And I was like, man, I really think I could do this. So I reached out to Andrew, good friend of mine. I know you know him too. Right. <laughs> and uh, because I've, done, I've started a couple of businesses and I've always liked to have somebody with me because it just makes it a little bit easier to stay motivated if you know, like when you split tasks, okay, if he's doing his part, I have to make sure I'm doing my part type thing or her, you know. But sure. um, So he and I talked about it and he was all in. He's like, dude, this sounds awesome. I want to do the same thing. He's similar. He's pretty handy as well. And... Uh, one day we were just talking and we we're just kind of like, dude, let's just freaking do it. So we went to the bank. I have a, I already had a business license. So opened up a credit card under my business line and started buying everything we needed to get started. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So 
what do you like what did you guys need to get started what what like what did you have to buy to get it yeah so we had to get like anvils like strike uh like the the material on hammers tongs we can put the stuff into the into the flame a forge which is not cheap like to heat up the metal all the safety equipment first aid equipment um grinders so we can like do the finish on the blades and make them sharp and make them look nice lighting in my garage like getting that all set up um a space to put all the tools and hang all the tools so it wasn't super cheap to get started right. but um just because i didn't really have anything like that yeah i had like drills and screwdrivers and crescent wrenches and things like that right but nothing nothing in regards to forging <laughs> right and your garage is it just like a two-car garage in the front front yeah yeah okay um i like it yeah <laughs> Every great business starts out of a garage, right? It's true. Or a home office. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so you guys start this business, you buy everything, you get it ready. You come up with the name, the forge. What, like, what was your first initial plan? How are you guys going to get people to show up to your garage? Like, what did you think? Okay. What are we going to do? Right. Um, obviously that's a huge fear when you're starting something out of your garage. It's like, Oh man, when people show up, are they going to be like, what the heck is going on? This seems sketchy. Right. But um, we initially started with people we knew, right? So friends and said, hey, um, you know, we'll give you guys a really cheap rate to come in. We'll basically do this for you at our cost, not including our time. And if you can just post on your Instagram for us. Right. Um, word of mouth. If I feel like people who watch this know that that's the best way of marketing. So I just took as many people as I could. And honestly, preferably my friends that did have a larger following on social media just to get more of that spread. Right, for sure. Yeah, so that was the initial plan, just getting people on, just getting people through. Um, I have a really good friend who does videography, and he, he, he was just starting up his video business. He's actually really good. Um, but I said, hey, if you need any material for your portfolio, um, I, you could come and do a shoot for us. And he made this awesome video, and we posted that. So just little things like that. Most of, most of our marketing is done on Instagram. Okay. Um, and just kind of posting things to their hashtags, you know, all that jazz. So right. that, that was the initial like plan. Okay. How do we start getting people here? It's through other people. Okay. And so do you have a website then? So once, once people started looking at it, they just like sign up for a time. Yep. So it's the forge utah.com and people can book through the website. They can message me on Instagram to book. Honestly, I just go back into the back end of our booking platform on the site and plug them in there if they do it through Instagram. But it's pretty easy to book on the site. Okay. And what does it look like? How long does it take and how much does it cost to go do it? So it's 60 bucks per person. <clears throat> we do specials every once in a while. Um, group events are going to be a little bit cheaper if you have six or more people. Um, typically, like for a two person class, we tell people to plan on two hours. Uh, it can go shorter, but just plan on that. And then so we go through the class and at the end of every class, we make s'mores with them out okay. of the forge. <laughs> so okay. yeah, just a little snack at the end. Um, so how, how has it been, you know, $60 a person isn't cheap, mm -hmm. especially for people in Utah. So how <laughs> right. has it been trying, like, I want to know the details, like how has it been, mm -hmm. has it been hard or has it been a lot better than you thought? Or has it been full every time? Um, it has been like, it definitely has its ups and downs for sure. Um, like I said, I've had a couple other businesses, so I'm. I'm a little bit lucky in the sense of I kind of had certain expectations moving into it. But one of the ones that really threw me for a loop is when we first started, I thought date nights. This would be great for date nights, right? Right. And initially I thought, okay, I'm in Orem. You have UVU and BYU. Like, they're going to want to do some unique stuff. Yes, it's a little expensive. But um, so starting with that, I was thinking, oh, our demographic is going to be um, – you know, college kids, right? Big mistake. It, it wasn't. <clears throat> so when we initially started, it was trying to market to all these college kids or, you know, reaching out to my friends who were in college, like, Hey, come, come check this out or whatever. But as time has gone on, organically, we started getting more like established couples, maybe thirties ish, or people coming with their son or their daughter, like little okay. daddy daughter date type thing. And these are people, and a lot of them were coming from more of like the Salt Lake County. Which wow. was, yeah. So we do still have people come from Utah County, but as it's been going on, um, it's just, it's kind of moved towards that. And so when I noticed that a few months ago, then I changed, you know, our marketing tactic to, oh, let's try and find 
people that are more established families, a little bit older, they're in their careers because you're right, 60 bucks a person can be expensive to right. certain people, but people in this range can afford it, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. So, so tell me, so right now you've got it up, you got it going inside of your garage. If, you know, I want to know kind of the future, but before we get to the future, tell me like if you could go back and just change one thing when you started, what would it be? You know, the more that I've thought about it, um, I think one of the things I would have changed is being a little bit riskier. Okay. Um, like I said, when we started, I just took out like a, a credit card on a business account in my name so we could go buy everything. But we were deciding between doing a business loan or that. I did the credit card because I thought it was a safer route. <clears throat> um, but had I taken out a business loan, we would have gotten into our own space from the beginning we would have started with more equipment and been able to handle bigger classes from the beginning. Right. And I think that would have projected us farther than where we are now. I'm, I'm pretty confident it would have. I mean, it's not a bad thing. We're still growing, right? Like we still right. have more and more people coming in. How many can you guys hold at a time? Like or, in one class? Yeah. So we did eight people yesterday. And mm -hmm. I would say right now that's our threshold. It was, it was a lot of people in the one class. We were able to do it. Right. But um, moving forward is like we can do eight, but we need to we need to be a little bit more organized when we're doing it. For sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I would say if, if we had taken out a business loan and got into a space and, and started that way, I feel like it would have been a more motivating because there's more on the line. Right. Like, right. Got to make this work. Um, B, I think we would have grown a little bit faster and larger. Right. But I mean, the thing is, you, you never know. Exactly. And I think we, I mean, you guys have eight people in the class yesterday, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't have any expense for renting out. No. I mean, tax write off too. <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> um, that, that's awesome that you guys have been able to make it work in your garage. So like, what are your overhead expenses? Like, is it just like buying the things that they're torching or like, what, what is it? Um, yeah. So at, right now, the, obviously our time, right? Because we're the one teaching the class and then the horseshoes that we use um, and propane for the forge to, to keep the fire going. And then as, as we keep growing, we will have other expenses like adding more anvils. Anvils are not cheap, which I think is hilarious. As, as That's another funny thing I've learned right. going into this is, um, you know, you don't know much about blacksmith in the beginning. It's like, oh, it's just a piece of metal. Right. Right. But there are some anvils that go for like $2,000. What is like, an anvil? Explain that again. So anvil, if you think about like uh, um, Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner, like the big metal thing that will like drop on a cartoon's head or something like that, it looks almost like, uh, how do I explain it? <laughs> no one's ever asked me to explain <laughs> anvil before. It's, it's basically, uh, okay, if you picture a blacksmith, an anvil is they will rest like their metal on it. And that's what they hit it on. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I've so watched part, Game of Thrones. I, I can oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like something like that. And so they're really expensive. I don't remember why I was talking about that, but oh yeah. Cause we would need to buy more. Right. So that, that's another expense. Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, I mean, once you've bought one of those, you have it for a while, right? Or do you have to replace right. it pretty often? Right. But as we keep growing, we have to, keep adding more and more because typically we can put two person to one, two people to one anvil. Okay. So right now, like we did class of eight, we have four anvils. Okay. But eventually if we want to do class of 20, we would at least need 10. Right. So, okay. But that's, I mean, the nice thing about those, you buy it, you have it. It's not like a reoccurring purchase, is it? Right. No, for reoccurring, like I guess an overhead in that sense, it's uh honestly, there's, there's really not a lot. It's mainly the horseshoes, the gas lights, Stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, I think for a business to find something like that, like you guys can do this and make money at your garage and just pay, like you only need to use your expenses when people are there pretty much, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Exactly. Yeah. But so right now it's in your garage and this is your business, this is your baby. You've grown it for six months. You've had ups and downs, but you've learned a lot. Where do you see it going? Like, what do you envision so let's start just in six months from now, where do you hope it is? And then we'll do like a five year and a 10 year. Yeah. So, um, six months from now, starting with that, I would like to be in our own space. Um, we probably at that point still wouldn't hire a full-time blacksmith to work for us. Um, I mean, it'd be great if we right. could, that would be awesome. 
but just trying to, I'm, I, I'd like to lean more. So with Andrew and I, when we think about our plans, like moving forward, we always joke that Andrew is the visionary. He has all these big ideas like, oh, we should do this and do that. And right. I'm the one kind of like, well, like realistically, we probably can't do that yet. We maybe someday, but we should probably like focus more on this type of thing. So right. I understand. I'm the visionary. Dude. You are. <laughs> My wife's always like, nope, we can't do that. We have to wait. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You're like, whatever. Fine. But, um, yeah, so that's why I say like six months conservatively, you know, we're teaching, you know, a good amount of classes every week. Like it's taking up a lot of our free time, six months and, and it, it's doing well, I guess you could say like we're in our own space. Um, I would want to at least do a corporate activity twice a month at that point. Okay. Right now we're about, we just started corporate classes in November and we've done, we're like at one a month. We've done three so far. We have two more coming up. Okay. Between for the end of January and then February. How was it getting those corporate classes? It, it's a little, um, like, honestly, it's a little intimidating at first because trying to go in and be like, Hey, come pay me money and right. have your employees and have a good time, you know? But it's, it was a little bit easier because I've only gone with companies. Like I, I've worked in tech for a while. So that's my full-time job. Um, and I have connections at other companies. So reaching out to them and kind of doing my due diligence beforehand, like, Hey, do you guys do team activities or, you know, what, what is, uh, what are some like incentives and stuff that you guys do for sales teams, like budget wise, and then kind of getting that feedback and then saying, Hey, who's in charge of that, getting in touch with that person. And then this is what we do. If you guys want to come do a team activity, you, we can give you a corporate rate or something right. like that. Um, and it's been good so far. Um, Nobody's really turned it down. I think everybody's pretty much open to an idea of it. It's just whether or not if they actually want to do it. Right. Some of the feedback, like Lucid Software is one that's come a couple of times. Um, when they initially talk about it with their team, it seems like people are like, not necessarily put off, but they're kind of like, oh, that's weird. But then when they think about it, it's like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. Right. Like, I've never done anything like that before. So right. it, it ends up working out. Yeah, because I mean, I've always... When I've watched, you know, these movies where people are forging, I'm always like, how does that work? Like, <laughs> it's interesting to think like that's just how they made their weapons and everything in the olden time days. Mm -hmm. It's like, be, it's so interesting to be like, wow, that's cool. And to have the opportunity to go and like, you know, heat up something really hot and forge it into something would be, I think that'd be way fun. Yeah. And a cool thing. No, yeah. So I can understand why these corporate people, you know, it would be a good team building or fun, something fun to do as a corporate. Yeah. And one of our like little like slangs or whatever is it like on our website, we say we take it back to the iron age because if you think about all the things that we have now today, so like this uh, mixer board, right? It's made out of metal, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> you know, there's machines that make this now hundred, 200 years ago, people were making stuff. Well, they weren't making mixer boards, but they're making everything <laughs> right. by hand. Right. And so it's kind of cool to go in there and see like what it actually takes. Cause you think like, Oh, a knife, like a knife is small. It doesn't seem difficult to make, but obviously Andrew and I, we've done it enough times that, you know, we can whip out a knife in like 10 minutes, but the class is two hours for a reason, because if you've never done it before, every time people are like, man, that's so crazy. I did not think it would take that much work to make one little knife. Right. But it kind of just puts a perspective into, you know, what we have. Okay. That's way cool. So, so you're continue. So you're getting corporate people. You want to have your own space in six months. And is this just something you'd like to have on the side that for fun, or is this something that you would like to eventually, you know, build over the years into something bigger? Definitely build into something bigger. I'm a big advocate of working for yourself. Okay. Um, one of my best friends, Shay, you know, Shay from S Yeah. Um, he, he has always said, like he heard from somebody once that, you can't be wealthy working for somebody else. And that's always just been a good motivator for me. So yes, short, short answer. I would love for this to grow huge and like build into something bigger and to where honestly, I'm not teaching the classes anymore. I have somebody doing the marketing for me and I'm on a beach in, you know, in, in Q on Cuba or something like that. Right. Chilling while this thing's pumping money into my bank account. <laughs> right. For sure. But, um, bigger, bigger picture. Like you, you asked earlier, like five or 10 years down the road. This is where Andrew's role kicks in for the visionary. Right. And I think it's a great idea. We would like to eventually partner up with other quote unquote primitive type activities. So have you heard of the creative kiln? I have. So they do like the clay making and stuff like that. Right. <laughs> um, Tyler and I, or excuse me, Tyler. Tyler's the owner of the creative kiln. Andrew and I know him pretty well. And we've kind of just spit the idea out like, hey, 
we should eventually do something where almost like a warehouse type thing where you can come in, there's blacksmithing in one corner, the, the like leather work in another corner, woodworking, um, pottery, stuff like that, where people can come in on like a Saturday and they, they can do multiple activities or they can buy like a pass to come in once a week. Right. So, so you can kind of get, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That release because it really is therapeutic doing right. stuff with your hands, like building and creating. Um, I, I believe that we as humans like deep down enjoy to create for sure. And so when you get to do something like that and you have an opportunity to do it often, I, I genuinely believe it makes you a happier person. That's awesome. And so would you say like, you know, are you doing this? Like, do you feel like what I'm trying to get to is your passion behind this business. Is it to make you money or is it to like help people find that joy and finding, get you finding that release? If I'm being fully transparent, it's going to be more on the money side. Right. That's good. <laughs> but, I want you to be transparent. <laughs> but like, yes, it is like it, there really is something special when somebody, come, like I said, when somebody comes in, they struggle the whole time making a knife. But then by the end, they're like, wow, this is cool. And like, they're excited. You know, they start asking, like, if I want to put a handle on this or like, if I want to display this or like, how do I maintain this knife? How do I sharpen it? How do I make sure it doesn't rust? Stuff like that. Right. That part's pretty cool just to be able to say, Hey, I was, I, I had a part in making a memory. Right. So like that part really is cool. But, That's um, cool. you know, big fat end goal is, you know, have a business that is like running itself. Right. Essentially. And I can step away from. Would you guys then check one, like franchise it so you can have locations all over the place? We would. We I, def- thought, I okay. feel like that would be the forge would be a very easy, um, franchisable business. Totally. Yeah. The only hard part about it is finding people who can teach blacksmithing. Right. It's a dying trade. Not many people know it. But could you like teach people? And then like if you wanted to open one in Idaho and found a manager and be like, come here for three weeks, we'll train you and teach you how to be a blacksmith. Yes. Could you, could you do that? Definitely. Yeah, we definitely could. I'm just saying if somebody was like, let's say it, they didn't want to come to Utah and do that for some reason. Right. I said, oh, I think I could figure it out. I'd be like, eh, you should probably come, uh, Come right. swing by the forge. But if someone's going to open a franchise of the forge, they want to know. I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd be like, if you want to do this, this is a requirement. Yeah. You got to, you got to prove it to me a little bit. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's awesome. Do you have anything else? Like I want, like I was telling you earlier, I want you to use this as like a journal for yourself as like where you're at right now, how you're feeling about the business and just for yourself. So, you know, in six months or a year, when I bring you on again to kind of give an update, like you can look, reflect back to this and be like, wow, that's my mindset at the moment. Is there anything you want to say or how you feel or? Yeah, no, that, that's great. Um, one of the, one of the fears I have right now is my wife and I are moving. So we are moving up to Draper. Okay. And one of my fears is, so, so we won't be moving to like August or it's October, somewhere around there. But I'm like, I need to grow this and get into a space before then, because I'm worried and we know how Draper is like, <laughs> right. People probably aren't going to want to hear stuff like clanging metal in the middle of the night, right? So my fear is like, shoot, like if it doesn't get to that point before we move, like, do I sell it? Do I give it up to Andrew or something? Like, I don't know. But I think if I was to give myself a piece of advice, it would be take the time right now just to to give your all into it. Worst case scenario, I fail, right? Worst case scenario is like, hey, couldn't make this work. Like, I'm not able to continue this out of my garage. Andrew lives in Eagle Mountain. Nobody wants to drive out to Eagle Mountain to go take a night making <laughs> class. So I would say just note to myself, push on it, make it work, make it happen. And, you know, become a billionaire after that, you know, make it work, make it happen, become a billionaire. <laughs> That's all I you like need. <laughs> um, okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. It was fun. Yeah, so thanks, they can find you on Instagram at the forge. So Instagram at the forge, Utah. The Forge Utah. And then website is theforgeutah.com. Okay, awesome. And this is Keegan Mataele. Nice. He's my good friend, but this is exciting. This is your quest. I think it's cool that you found something that is working right now and you're building towards and you have these big aspirations. I say it's great and go for it, you know? Yeah, thanks, man. It's been awesome being on your show. Um, it's cool to, to see you helping uh, like entrepreneurs kind of get their name out there. And I really like your perspective of checking back right right giving giving that accountability like hey you're on let's let's see where you're at now i think it honestly it's motivating for me 
Right. So it's cool. Yeah. I hope this motivates you. So in a year and you come on or whenever, once you move, I'll bring you on and you can say, <laughs> we found a place. We did this. That would be dope. X, Y, and Z. Okay. So yeah. And if people want to reach out to you, you know, I want people that are also like, I want to start a business similar to, you know, to Keegan's sure. or to something to reach out to you and that they can see kind of the process behind it and what it takes. Totally. But it's awesome. I'm excited for you. Hope it all works out. And then, Thanks, yeah. So I guess we'll talk next time. Next until next time. Until next time. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Keegan. Thanks, Cody. Kick you off with a little. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I really do okay. love this. You like it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta end with it. Start with it. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks. See you guys. See ya.